guys, welcome back to our Monolith to Microservice project series with Golang. In this video, I want to finish the order.go and the product.go file. They both belong to the package orders. So let's say package orders, and I'll import this package called errors. I need it in a while. I'll define a variable called id, which is string. And I'll also define a new error, error empty order. Right. So if you, in case you have done my uh, my, uh, my e-commerce with Golang project series, if you're doing it along with uh, you know uh, me, then you have seen how we can create our own custom errors, the complete lesson, keep it. So here we're just creating one error, but there could be so many more errors that you could have created in, um, in advance and just keep them so that you, they can be used or reused later on throughout the project. So empty order ID. Okay, so I'm just creating this um, error for now. I'll use it. First things first, let's create a struct about how our order will look like. Our order will have an ID, okay, of type ID, which is again of type string, product of type product, and address of type address. And the order will also have a field called paid, which will be Boolean. Now we'll have a few uh, methods. The first method I'll have will be called id, which will basically return an id, and it returns o dot id. Okay, very similar to what we did with the address. Very similar. Doing the same thing out here, and then we'll have a function or basically a method called product, which will simply return a product. Product will be a struct we'll define here. Address is a struct that we've already defined here. Right, so since they all belong to the package orders, they'll have access to each other. Simply returns O dot product, okay. And you'll just copy and paste this because we'll have address and Boolean as well. So address, uh, after process address returns an address and this method I want this to say paid it returns a boolean and here this will return address whereas this will return paid and um, your last method will be called mark as paid. Okay. And you'll just say O dot. So this function, all this does is it just marks the order with paid. So it'll say O dot paid will become true if it was false earlier, right? Since, since paid is actually a Boolean. You'll get a squiggly line here for product, not a problem because you've not defined our product uh, struct yet in this package. Okay, so now the most important part in this uh, file, just like we had in this file, we had new address, we'll have our new order out here. So we'll say func new order, this is not a method, just, an, just a function. Takes an id product, which will type product address which is of type address returns an order and as an or it might return an error if things are not right. So first you want to check the length of id. If it's zero, you want to say there's nothing for the order but the um, error will be empty order id. But if everything was well, you'll say return an order with id product address and paid will be false and nil. And so when you create a new order, right, you want the paid to be false, obviously. And that's why we have this function called mark as paid because specifically we'll call this function to mark that order as paid. 
But order.go file is complete. Now we have to work in our product.go file. So I'll say again package orders. Okay. And I'll say import. Firstly, I, I need definitely errors. Then I want to go here. Uh, um, Okay, we don't have it yet. No problem. I'll need access to my package common. So, um, just a second. So for now, since I've not initialized the project till now, I'll just say uh, package slash common slash price, just to tell you that we want access to package common and this price package is what you want access to. That's what I've imported here. Okay. And firstly, we'll create our product ID. Sorry. Which will be a string. And just like we did for order, right? We had ID for order, now we have ID for product. Similarly, we'll create a um, Error also, so it's a var error empty product id will be equal to errors dot new empty product id and then you'll have type product struct you'll have an id which is of type product id the next thing that we can have is name so type string and price which is of type price dot price price dot price being this price package that i got from here and i've defined the struct for price already there which will have sense and currency that's the one i've imported here right so that's the field i've created so my product has a price also and um, then we have a few methods so the methods that we'll have basically will be uh, id name so be func returns and this one returns an id of type product id and next will be returning a name which is basically a string and then you have This one returning a price, which is a type price of price. So what all do they return? They return this one returns p dot id. This one returns p dot name. This one returns p dot price. Uh, now, the most important thing in this file again, just like all the other files, was the new product function. To be able to create a new product, I mean, this function will obviously return a product, right? But to be able to create a new product, what all do you need? You need ID, name, and price. So you write that down ID, name, and price. ID, you know, is of type product ID. Name is always string. And price is obviously price dot price. What does this function do? It will first check the length of ID. If length of ID is zero, will return an empty product. It will return an error, empty product ID. And return the products with if everything went well, it will return uh, basically a product which will have three things, right? ID name and price. Let's say ID, comma name, comma price, and it won't return any error, so it'll say nil. So we are done with our order file and our product file. And I hope you're enjoying the series. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.